So real physiology, another thing more practical to keep in mind. I know your exam is next week, and the exam doesn't cover renal. Don't fall behind on looking at some of the renal. A lot of students will struggle with some concepts in renal. Um, so basically, don't fall too far behind. Fortunately, if you get renal, our next section, GI physiology, is really easy. We know the cellular molecular mechanisms that control renal function in the GI tract is really easy. But anyway, don't fall behind. Okay. Usual when we start a new topic, we're going to go over some anatomy. So we'll cover renal anatomy. And we'll start with the overall anatomy. We'll start with the kidney. And we'll work our way down to what we want to get to is the nephron. Really, you'll see that the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. So, unfortunately, we don't have to know how the cells in the nephron to work. The renal is kind of nice because the nephron's a little bigger, and you can actually understand most of renal function based on the nephron. If it's just big enough, we can look at it under the microscope. So, in the end, you know a lot about renal function. Then we'll start to get into physiology. We'll start with what's called glomerular filtration. Basically, that'll make more sense after these ones. What's the goal of the kidney? You guys talked about that. Seems simple, right? This is the goal. So you're going to regulate the composition of your blood. Really good part. But we'll regulate the composition of the blood. And another key thing here is the plasma volume. So what do you think of with plasma volume and cardiovascular volume? Here's your key link between the renal system and the cardiovascular system. By controlling the amount of plasma volume, you have a big effect on the cardiovascular system. So if you increase blood volume, what happens to blood pressure? We talked about that, right? You got a choice. Increase your deep. Decrease, how many they increase? Take blood volume, increase. What's going to happen to blood pressure? Increase. And so long-term regulation of cardiovascular function, a lot of it's done through the kidneys by our blood volume. So if you can increase your blood volume, of course you can increase the pressure on the wall, you'll increase blood pressure. And of course, if you lose a lot of blood, you'll have an increase in blood pressure. And the kidney does this really by controlling the amount of sodium. That's really good. We have to jump into some physiology. Anatomy is too dry. So the kidneys, you get about 20% of the cardiac output. Just sitting here, so your resting cardiac output, 20% goes to the kidney. In the end, you're going to filter 180 liters of plasma <coughs> per day. Think about that. That's quite a bit. You know what a two liter bottle looks like. So for your kidneys to filter that much fluid, that's a lot of energy involved, a lot of work involved. Ultimately, what you can do, your total plasma volume, roughly three liters. So that means you're taking your total plasma volume and you're filtering it about 60 times per day with the kidneys. So this is kind of a big task. With all that blood going through, you get quite a few important functions. <coughs> well, obviously, you're filtering it. What's the end product? All right, so all this blood goes into the kidney. And what's one of the main end products of the kidney? When it's all done, what does the kidney put out? Urine. urine. In the urine, that's where you get rid of a lot of metabolic waste products. The kidney's going to do this. It's going to take it out of the plasma, decide what goes into the urine, and get rid of it. Foreign chemicals, drugs, hormones, metabolite. Guess what they check when they want to do a drug test? <coughs> Here. It's a really good way to see what's been going on inside of you is to look at the urine. That's really the main function. Of course, another one is, it's really a byproduct of this filtration, is regulate water and electrolyte balance. And of course, you know this. If you're dehydrated, is your urine different than if you've been drinking water? <coughs> Uh, really, your kidneys allow you to live on land. You can conserve water. But a lot of that's done by just controlling the electrolyte balance. You'll see it, not so much this lecture. So 
on probably the next lecture by controlling the amount of sodium in your blood. You control blood volume, control water loss. And that's how you control arterial blood pressure. Control is really the amount of sodium. You guys have heard, right? You have high blood pressure, should you go eat a lot of salty potato chips? No. It's your case picture. Sunday football. But it's that sodium that's the problem. We'll get to that. With that, by controlling what's in the plasma, one thing you can control is the amount of protons or the acidity. We talked about with respiration, and it's short term, you can control blood pH by breathing, that's the bicarbonate system. But long term, if you want to control the amount of protons, hydrogen ions, you're going to do it through the system. Okay, now we're getting more minor functions. So the mesial erythropoiesis is really a, a hormone, and basically, so this would be a secondary endocrine. The primary function of the kidney is regulating the plasma. So, but this is for producing red blood cells. You also activate vitamin D. This is kind of important. They all are, right? If it's a vitamin, it's probably important. So you activate vitamin D with it. You can activate a lot. You've got a lot of blood going into the kidney. This is important in calcium regulation. And this one, your book says that I hesitate to put it up here. You can control some of your glucose homeostasis. Basically, you can control some of the glucose during fasting with gluconeogenesis in the kidneys. That's a minor role for the kidney, and it's a minor contribution to your glucose. But your book put it in there. Let's see, it's one of those. Let's start getting into the anatomy. So, your overall kidneys. This is where the blood goes in. Plasma gets filtered. The resulting product, urine, is produced in the kidneys and ultimately goes down the ureter to the bladder. That's where you store it until it's appropriate to get rid of it. It's convenient. Then, that's pretty much all we're going to focus on. The real focus for our renal physiology is how do you make the urine. Now, there is more involved with controlling the release of the urine. A little beyond this class, beyond time. The main focus is we'll stick with the kidneys, how you produce it. Once it's produced, down the ureter to the bladder, out through the gut. All right. Kidney bean, right? I don't know what came first. You've got a bean that looks like a kidney. So, in terms of naming it, I don't know if they saw the bean and said, hey, that looks like a kidney. Let's call this a kidney. Could have been the other way. Probably the other way. Right? They first had the bean, and then someone had a bad accident. Hey, that looks like a kidney. Looks like a kidney. Either way, <coughs> you can see the shape. Looks like a kidney. You've got key anatomy. It's really, remember the energy? How important this is? 180 meters per day. So 20% of your cardiac output, about 16% of the ATP that you're burning is used up by the kidney. But keep in mind, they're only about the size of the kids. So what do you end up with? It's about 1% of your body weight. It's burning about 16% of your ATP. and getting about 20% of your cardiac output. Blood enters this one's creative, right? Blood comes into the renal artery, leads to the renal vein. You wouldn't guess it. Structure-wise, we'll look at it in a couple more slides. You've got the outside. It's really a top layer for protection. Right inside of that, you've got the cortex. So notice the cortex is sort of that continuous band that wraps all around the outside. Just inside of that, you have these, what they're called real pyramids. That's where a lot is going to happen. You're going to need to know, keep reference to the cortex and all these, the renal medulla, the inside region there, those renal pyramids. Get inside here, you have, this is where you're going to produce the urine. It's the nephron, the hands who are going to do it. They're going to be located in both the cortex and the renal medulla. Once they produce the urine, it ultimately ends up going into the calyx. You start in the minor calyx. Right in here is the tip of that pyramid. Goes to the major, major calyx, and then finally out of the urethra. Again, our main focus in the class isn't urine itself, it's the production. 
So we're going to focus on everything that happens inside the cortex, renal medulla, to produce the urine to drop it off in the cave. Lots of blood. You can kind of see it here, don't worry about the names of those. You guys take human anatomy, then you can worry about that. Blood comes in, notice it goes out to the cortex plant. So this would be the entering blood through the renal artery, goes out to the cortex, and you'll also see the blood supply leaves. You end up, this is where the filtration starts to happen. And it goes out to the renal veins, and it'll exit through the skin. A little closer look at this. I think it's probably the same picture blown up. Here's those renal pyramids, renal medulla. Inside now, here's where we're getting where the heart of it is, the neck. And you can see them in here, it basically looks like a mess. It does look like a mess, but it's a very organized mess. Makes sense. If you've ever seen some offices and it's a disaster, but it's very organized. This looks like a disaster. It's very organized. And what we're going to do, we'll go over each part of this neck. Some key loops in here, and this is a not to scale. In fact, it's not even close. You can see you have total about one million nephrons in your kidney. So obviously, they're a little tighter packed in there than the nephrons. A little closer look at that nephron. In here, so this would be the cortex. This white layer on top is the cortex. The bottom layer is always going to be your medulla. Now you start to see, when you look at just one nephron, you see a little more organization there. Key feature is this loop. There's always a loop that goes down into the medulla. Sometimes you'll see the loop with longer. This basically lets you live on land. Simple structure, but you're going to need it to function. To conserve water, you have to have this. And there's some convoluted sections. But all the blood comes in, so we're up in the cortex. Here's where the initial filtration happens. We'll talk about this later today. That blood gets filled into the plasma, then goes into the renal tubules up in the cortex. And then it'll follow all the way through this loop. We'll go into another picture of the nephron. And all the way back out. So if you look a little closer at the nephron, we focus just on that anatomy. Here's where we start. This is where the blood comes in. That's the initial filtration. It's going to go to the renal corpuscle. Two key parts of that. Your glomerulus. This is sort of what looks like it's red in there. And that's really your capillary. This is where the initial filtration happens. And this is the specialized capillary. Not as simple as the ones that we talked about before. After the capillary, what happens is the plasma gets filtered and goes into Bowman's capsule. And that's basically the yellow colored tubules surrounding the glomerulus. So now you did your filtration. Now that filtered product is now in the renal tubules, starting in Bowman's capsule. First place it goes is the proximal tubule. Proximal because it's closest to the glomerulus, closest to the start. Notice how it's all wrapped up here. That's your proximal convoluted tubule. Then you'll see, nicely named, the proximal straight tubule. And once you get through here, what you're going to do is into this loop of hemp. The name is not too bad. You've got a descending limb, you've got an ascending limb. You happen to have a descending limb, and on the ascending side, you have a thin section, and you also have a thin section. After that, there's some key anatomy here. Notice that once you get out of it, you're going up the ascending side of the loop of pendants. Notice where the fluid goes. Right back where it starts. It doesn't mix with it, but it goes. The distal section here now comes in very close contact to that renal course. That's that for a reason, you see. Now, after you pass that in this distal section, you go to a collecting duct. You're almost done. You go to the collecting duct, and then you drop off into, we'll just get, for now we'll call this the whole thing the collecting duct. The fluid that makes it all the way through here, fluid and substances, all the way through the proximal, all the way through the loop of Henle, distal collecting duct, through the cortical, medullar collecting duct. Finally, once you get dropped off here, you're in your 
Now, this is kind of messy. This whole process is used to filter and control files. So each section does something slightly different. And we'll see what it does. 